Hi, and welcome to this special interview with the Canadian Donation and Transplantation Research Program, the CDTRP. My name is Stephanie, and I'm the CDTRP Communications Manager. It is my pleasure to meet today with Dr. Ghiara Sebastiani as part of the Liver Health Month, which takes place each year in March. Ghiara is a hepatologist and the research director of the Division of Gastroenterology and Hepatology at McGill University Health Center in Montreal, where her principal focus is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, known as NAFLD, and non-invasive diagnosis of liver disease. She's also the co-founder of the Canadian NASH Network, which researches in AFLD, and she has been involved with the CDTRP as an investigator for many years. Welcome, Giara. Thank you for taking the time to speak with me today. Thank you very much, Stephanie. It's always a pleasure to be here with the CDTRP because I think uh, the work you are doing, it's amazing. You raise awareness about liver disease and liver transplantations for our patients. Thank you. Um, first off, can you uh, start us with some background and um, some uh, your research background or personal background and what got you into the liver world? Yeah, absolutely, Stephanie. So I am uh, an Italian doctor trained in Italy. I moved to Canada about 10 years ago. Um, I had the pleasure and the opportunity of working with uh, uh, many opinion leaders in the field of liver disease, liver fibrosis, non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. So this actually inspired me to get this uh, topic of research since many years, since I'm living, I'm actually working on liver fibrosis and non-invasive diagnostic tests since about 20 years. And since about 20, 10 years, I'm working on non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. I was always amazed by the liver because this is really the largest organ in our body and is also the chemical center of our body. It's uh, just an amazing uh, um, organ that is so essential and uh, so also beautiful for the human being for what uh, it can do and what it can give us and the life uh, and uh, uh, the, all the chemical reactions that happen within it. So I was always uh, very fascinated and I started working on liver since very early in my training in medical school, since I was a medical student. So here I am. Uh, Several years later, I will not tell you how many, but uh, I stick to the liver since many, many years. Thank you, Giara. What a nice journey all the way from Italy to now Canada. <laughs> um, by reading your recent feature in the Lancet Gastroenterology and Hepatology, congratulations, uh, by the way. I saw that you mentored close to 40 research trainees during your 10 years at McGill University. Why is it important for you to pass on your knowledge to the next generation and early career researchers? Uh, that's uh, an excellent question. I I feel as a, a, a quite, I would say, accomplished researcher and uh, always a a, a very advocating uh, physician for, for the liver health of my patients, I feel that uh, it's very important uh, to transmit uh, passion for medicine and for clinical research to the young trainees who have uh, uh, so many energies, so many, uh, so many dynamism, and can really bring uh, so much into the clinical research uh, and uh, into medicine. So for me, really, I, have a, I am a clinical scientist. So a lot of my time is dedicated to clinical research. And what I like to communicate to my, my trainees uh, is the passion for clinical research because clinical research is like a fire that continues to, to burn inside, inside us and can really drive uh, policy changes. I feel it is amazing to change the individual lives of patients with our medical practice. But on the other side, I always uh, try to communicate to, to my trainees that if you love clinical research, uh, you should uh, really dedicate time to it because you 
can actually, your research can drive policy changes at a large level. For example, I am very much involved in uh, clinical care guidelines. And uh, as the primary reviewer of the European AIDS Clinical Society, I was uh, uh, instrumental in uh, adding a NAFLD chapter specifically in the uh, AIDS Clinical Society guidelines because this is one of the risk population for NAFLD. So this is something that uh, really uh, feels, uh, feels like you can change uh, things uh, with your research. And uh, I really feel that trainees uh, are the future for this, to change and to drive policy changes. Amazing. We can very much feel your passion for it. This is for sure. <laughs> um, Non-oncolic fatty liver disease becomes more and more predominant with the sedentary lifestyle, thanks to the remote working and uh, the increase in obesity in the North American population, which can lead to liver transplantation if undiagnosed. If you had to pick and choose one area, where do you think the liver research should focus and why do you think so? So absolutely, this is a very important question. Unfortunately, um, NAFLD uh, is now the, the number one uh, uh, cause of liver transplantation in North America together with alcoholic fatty liver disease. I think uh, there are one of the most important areas of research is uh, patient-oriented research. So really to involve patients in the research around NAFLD, because uh, unfortunately NAFLD is a silent disease. And in many cases, patients are diagnosed when there is already liver cirrhosis, there is already a first episode of liver, of liver decompensation, and then the patients very fast need to be listed for liver transplant. As such, I believe that the uh, uh, the involvement, the close work with patient associations uh, is essential in research, in clinical research around the liver and especially around the NAFLD uh, in order to, uh, to provide uh, the patients the tools for advocacy and also the patients to be empowered in their own care. So in this sense, uh, uh, the empowerment of patients uh, will would also lead to better uptake of the lifestyle recommendations, for example, around the NAFLD uh, or uh, uh, the physical exercise recommendation around, around NAFLD. So I think everything that is related to lifestyle changes and patients' empowerment, it's something that should be a focus on the next research around the NAFLD and liver transplant related. Great. Um, so as a research network with uh, a patient, family and donor research platform and an education platform, how can the CDTRP make a difference in the lives of patients and caregivers living with liver disease? I think that the, the CDTRP is already doing uh, really a great uh, a great job in terms of, uh, uh, of uh, education, in terms of patient involvement. I, I think that advocacy is also a, a, a key because, for example, I, I would like to stress that still uh, uh, there, are, um, there are many problems around food insecurity, for example, in our country, which uh, is a very important problem in, in, in people with, living with liver disease or in the liver transplant list. Uh, and also, uh, we should uh, uh, do a call for action for better food labeling, for example, to understand which are the food that may be uh, the worst for our patients, which there is not a lot, unfortunately, in the current uh, uh, commercial uh, system of the food. Uh, so really, advocacy around food insecurity, uh, around the importance of good nutrition, it's going to be a 
a, a life changer, I think, uh, throughout the spectrum of liver disease, for example, and also in, in a broader term, uh, lifestyle interventions, uh, physical exercise, because at the of the spectrum of liver disease, the physical exercise from the early liver disease until liver cirrhosis and even in liver transplant recipients have been really shown to improve uh, uh, the quality of life of the patients and also the outcome. So that would be amazing. <laughs> So good. And I don't know if you knew, but March is also the nutrition month. So everything uh, links. Uh... <laughs> exactly. That's why I was mentioning it. And everything fits together. Nutrition and the liver go so nicely together. <laughs> there you go. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Giara, for your precious, precious time. I will make sure to post the link to your Lancet feature on our website. Thank you. Make sure to uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel to not miss any special features like this one. You can also visit our website at cdtrp.ca to learn more on the Canadian Donation and Transplantation Research Program. Thank you. Thank you very much for hosting me, Stephanie.